So, uh, today uh, we're going to be talking about gas pressure, okay, and it's actually a continuation uh, from what we've learned before. Okay, so the first thing we learned was about liquid pressure, then we moved from liquid pressure, and I still want you to remember the same formula, uh, okay, which is P pressure equals to rho Hg. Okay, density times the height of the water or the depth of the water, okay, times gravity, uh, gravity which is uh, 9.81. Okay. And then uh, after that, we talked about atmospheric pressure and then we realized that when you are actually in water, uh, let's say you're swimming underwater, you not only have the liquid pressure pressing on you, you also have the atmospheric pressure. Okay, Assuming that you are uh, swimming on Earth. Lah. <laughs> okay, because Earth, they are the atmosphere. Kind, okay, So if you're swimming, let's say you're swimming in Mars, uh, where there is no air, there is no atmosphere, then there won't be any atmospheric pressure. Lah. Nama pun tekanan atmosfera. So, there mesti dari pada atmosfera. And as far as I know, only Earth has an atmospheric layer. Lah. Okay, so now we're going to talk about gas pressure, specifically gas pressure. Contohnya, tekanan di dalam satu tong gas. Okay, and we talked about gas pressure last year when we were doing heat. Okay, remember the three laws, uh, the three gas laws. There's Boyle's law, okay, and then there's Charles' law, okay, and then of course there's the pressure law, okay. Uh, so we talked a little bit about uh, gas pressure last year, and I mentioned uh, that the reason why gas pressure exists is because let's say you have a bekas tertutup, uh, let's say you have a closed uh, container, and inside the closed container is just gas gas or air okay and gas and air or gas or air okay they are not stationary they are always moving around and they are not only moving around they are moving around randomly okay so because they are moving around randomly they are going to collide with the wall and they're going to collide with one another so gas pressure exists uh, because of the collision Okay, wujudnya tekanan gas kerana pelanggaran na, okay, between gas uh, molecules okay, and the wall okay, of the container, of any container. So let's say in a tong gas, na, yang kita biasa bahkan yang warna kuning, na, warna hijau itu kan. So in a tong gas, inside there, there's a lot of gas lah. <laughs> okay, inside there's a lot of gas and there's all these gas molecules that are constantly walk, running around here, running around there and they're going to uh, hit the wall of the container. Of course, we don't hear it lah. Bukan yang kita dengar tingkong, 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 tiada lah. But because they're always hitting the wall of the container, that's why there's gas pressure. Okay, because remember, uh, the very fundamental formula for pressure, if there is a force over a certain amount of area okay whenever there is a force kerana pelanggaran uh, over a certain amount of area that area is going to experience pressure and because the force comes from the collision uh, pelanggaran antara gas molecule dengan itu dinding dengan itu surface of the dinding makan therefore we call that gas pressure okay but the basics of this is this lah gas pressure is caused uh, is dia disebabkan oleh pelanggaran antara molekul gas dengan be dinding bekas, any bekas. Okay, so and of course we don't feel it nah until it hits us lah, or we don't really hear it. Okay, but let's say you have an empty Tupperware, okay, <laughs> yeah, you have an empty Tupperware lah. Okay, then you tutup mah. Okay, we have to remember that inside the Tupperware, although it's empty, it's technically not empty. Okay, there is air inside. And because there's air inside, you are going to feel gas pressure. Same thing, uh, like if you take a bottle, okay, if you take a bottle, you finish, let's say, you finish all the drinks in that bottle, it's an empty bottle. But when you close the bottle, uh, and when you close it tight, uh, you find that you cannot fully press it down. Okay, there is something that seems to be pressing it back. Okay, and that's what is called gas pressure. There's gas inside that empty bottle. And the gas pressure, the gas uh, is pushing it back uh, so that it's making it hard for you uh, to like fully compress the bottle. That's why you cannot just, that's why bila kalau, kalau kamu mau kronyokkan satu bottle, bakal, you don't put the lid on. You, know, you take out the bottle cap so that all you can, you know, you can push out all the gas. Dia ada tempat untuk pergi. 
Okay, nobody closes a bottle and then after that, cuba keronyokkan the bottle. Like, what? Okay, you're always going to have gas pressure fighting against you. Okay, so today, uh, our, uh, the two things that we need to do is I need to teach you how to read the gas pressure using a manometer. We've, we've talked about this before uh, in the first subtopic. And then, of course, we're going to talk about, you know, normal problems lah. so this is what i'm talking about now okay this is an m this is a bekas and all these gas molecules they are moving randomly okay they're just moving randomly you cannot predict where they're going to go but they're going to crash with the wall okay and they're also going to crash with one another lah. okay but the one i'm interested in is when they're crashing over the wall because when they crash on the wall they are mengenakan satu force over this area okay and force over an area is always known as pressure Okay, so this is a manometer which originally uh, we used to call this a YouTube. Okay, so this is the original YouTube. Okay, not the YouTube that you are used to these days. Lah. Okay, this is the original YouTube. And uh, just like everything in this world, everybody likes to take something scientific and make it sound cool. Okay, so YouTube uh, is... <laughs> Yeah, YouTube is actually something scientific, okay? And then uh, the powers that be have taken it and made it to something cooler. <sighs> okay, so anyway, so a manometer consists of a YouTube that is filled with a liquid, like, can be water, can be oil, can be mercury, okay? Now, in figure A, in this figure, what happens to both the mercury levels, assuming that it is mercury levels, okay? Uh, they need, this is air, uh, okay, not air. <laughs> okay, when both ends of the tube is exposed to atmospheric pressure, okay, what happens will be they will be at the same level because there is nothing else that is pushing on this water except for atmospheric pressure. Okay, so they will be at the same level. This is very normal. Lah. Okay, if you if you take a, a pipe at home, huh, okay, and then you just fill it with water, no matter how you no matter how you have you ever done this before? You, let's say you put one side of the tube higher than the other kan, you'll find uh, that the water remains at the same level. Okay, you don't have a situation now uh, where, let's say your YouTube uh, is like this lah. Okay, then you don't have a situation where one is like this, one is like this. Uh. It doesn't happen that way. Uh. Okay, it will always be at, somehow uh, it will always be at the same level. Okay, no matter how you adjust the tube lah. Okay, because the idea is this lah. Okay, that the only pressure that is working on the water is atmospheric pressure and since atmospheric pressure is a constant uh, it's always 76 centimeter mercury okay or 1.0 something 1.03 times 10 to the power of 5 pascal okay it's going to be the same height okay? don't believe after this you go you go and take a pipe right and then you try to adjust it around and see you find it's at the same level of course okay of course if your youtube uh, you go and do like this lah like you want to like you want to be so extreme, right? So you put one very high and one very low. Of course, there's going to be water spilling out, lah. Okay, that's very normal, lah. Okay, but assuming that no water spills out, lah. <laughs> okay, assuming that no water spills out, it's going to be num num the same level. Go and try it. Okay, go and try, it. and then if you get something different, then you you tell me, lah. Okay, then I will ask somebody to come to your house because there's a ghost pushing on your water. <laughs> okay, it should be the same. Okay, but in this case, uh, now I will connect one side of the tube to the gas. And actually, we've spoken about this uh, in the first subtopic. Okay, now in this case, what happens to the mercury level, okay, when a tube, you know, when this one... So we find that the gas pressure is actually pushing down on the mercury. Assuming that this is mercury. Okay, so the gas pressure is pushing down on the mercury. Okay, and we find that in this case, uh, I mean, you take a look at this logically, lah. Who has the stronger pressure? Is it the gas pressure or the atmospheric pressure? Anybody? Yes, yes. Okay, the gas pressure is stronger. That's why the atmospheric pressure is losing. And we spoke about this before. That's why I said this subtopic very easy one. Okay, ini betul betul macam tolak air. Okay, siapa yang mampu menolak itu air dengan lebih kuat? Obviously, in this case, is gas. And because of that, we can use this relationship to determine the value of h okay h uh, is we call the difference in height okay the difference between height a sorry the gas pressure and this one will be the gas pressure minus the atmospheric pressure because gas pressure is winning okay that's why we put gas pressure first 
Okay, tekanan gas yang sedang menang sekarang. Jadi tekanan gas tolak dengan atmospheric pressure will equal to the difference in height. Okay, that's the first thing I want you to know. The second thing I want you to know is that at point A and point B, yeah, okay, at these two points, the pressure is the same. Okay, which means uh, that this gas pressure is equals to the atmospheric pressure plus the pressure on the liquid. Okay, which we studied on in the first subtopic. Lah. Okay, so this is something that I want you to remember. Lah. Two things. Number one, how to calculate the value of H. And number two, is that at the point where the mercury stops, lah, okay, at point A and point B over here, since they are at the same level, okay, the pressure at A and B is the same. Okay, so... Uh, so this one, yeah, sorry, we've already done this. Lah. So... The pressure at point B, okay, which is actually H, lah, okay, is actually the same as the atmospheric pressure plus the uh, the tekanan air. <laughs> uh, sorry. Yeah, tekanan air. I'm sorry, I don't know why this slide is in Malay, but well, I guess. Sekali-sekala, kita, kita kan DLP, okay, so Melayu Bahasa Inggris, gitu. Okay, so uh, at point B, as I said before, with the gas pressure, okay, it's the same. Okay, point B uh, is the same as point A, which is the same as gas pressure. Okay, remember this. All right. So there were th there are obviously three cases lah. Okay, there are obviously three cases that is possible lah when you talk about manometer and you sambungkan kepada gas. The first one is even when you pump in the gas, uh, you find that the level is the same. Therefore, in this case, the gas pressure is the same as the atmospheric pressure since there is no difference in height. Okay, very logical. Lah. It's the same as if you open the two ends. Lah. Okay, but since one end is disambung kepada gas, so we say in this case, the gas pressure is equal to the atmospheric pressure. Okay, case number one. Case number two is the one that we talked about just now. The gas pressure is pushing better than the atmospheric pressure. Okay, so we say that H equals to the gas pressure minus the atmospheric pressure. Pressure. Then, kalau kamu mau tukar ini, kamu boleh tukar tukar lah. Okay, gas pressure equals to H plus atmospheric pressure. But I always like to start with H equals to lah. Okay, then saya hanya perlu fikir siapa yang tengah menang sekarang. Is it the gas pressure winning or is it the atmospheric pressure winning? In this case, it's the gas pressure that's winning. Okay, and that's why the H is equals to the gas pressure minus the atmospheric pressure. Okay, that's case number two. And obviously, case number three. This is like tarik tali lah bahkan. Ini adalah case seri. Ini adalah case gas pressure menang. And then the third case obviously is the atmospheric pressure is winning. So in the case of the atmospheric pressure is winning, we say that H, same thing lah, H sama dengan siapa yang menang sekarang? Atmospheric pressure. So we put atmospheric pressure first. Then minus with the gas pressure. Because the gas pressure is losing. Is it possible for gas pressure to be less than atmospheric pressure? Yes, of course it's possible. Guys, remember, uh, atmospheric pressure is one point, is like 100,000, uh, 100,000, yeah, about lah, 100,000 pascals, you know, it's a very big amount of pressure. And sometimes it's possible for gas pressure to berkurang. Kan, let's say kamu masak, 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 kan, then one day, oh no, tiba-tiba saya punya api mati. Okay, it's because there's no more gas in your tong gas, but nama pun tong gas. And so when your gas inside your tong gas has finished, obviously the pressure in the tong gas sudah kecil lah, okay, atau almost zero. And in this case, let's say you sambung an empty tong gas into here, okay, you will get, obviously the atmospheric pressure will be stronger than the tong gas. Because remember, gas pressure depends on how many molecules there are in the bekas. If there's a lot of molecules, if there's a lot of gas molecules, then you have high gas pressure lah. Okay, because there's always a lot of banging going on. But if you have very less, very less, if you have very little molecules, uh, gas molecules, then you're going to get low gas pressure. Okay, just like if your class uh, has 50 people inside, right, it's going to be a very stressful class. Because <laughs> a lot of tension. Imagine, imagine being in a classroom with 50 people. Uh. Sorry, I don't know your situation. Uh. I don't know how many what is the maximum number of people uh, that you have in your class in your entire life studying? Uh? 
Okay, uh, when I was in school last time, there were 40 people in 4 0. Uh, okay, there were 40 people in my class, and we were the science class. Okay, and we had how many? We had two science classes in my school last time. So, tiap satu ada empat puluh orang. Okay, so you know, sometimes we should be grateful uh, that we are in a class. Berapa orang kelas kamu ni? 27 ka? 27 orang saja ka? 27 uh, is, a, is an okay number lah. Okay. Imagine uh, if you had 50 people in the class, like now, like our form one scan, there's 50 people in the class. You know? Imagine the amount of pressure uh, that all these 50 people are giving whoever that is teaching them. <laughs> okay, 27 people uh, is already very stressful. Okay, can you imagine 50 people? Okay, so the more gas molecules you have, uh, the more stressful it's going to be, the higher the pressure. Okay, the less molecules you have, the less gas pressure you're going to have. So in this case, the atmospheric pressure is obviously winning. Lah. Okay, that's why we write the H sama dengan atmospheric pressure minus the gas pressure. Because the atmospheric pressure is winning. Okay, so clear with the three cases. There are only three cases. Okay, either Surrey or gas pressure is winning or atmospheric pressure is winning. There can be no other way. Lah. Okay, well... Yeah, like there can be another way. Like maybe gas pressure cheating ka, or atmospheric pressure cheating. Ka. But let's not talk about this. Lah, okay, science is very fair to us. One. It's not like humans. Humans are always cheating us. Okay, anyway. Okay, so uh, I'm about to show you a video once again. Okay, and this video obviously has no sound. So, uh, but basically it's like this. Lah. We have a manometer. Okay, and inside this manometer, there's this colored water. Okay, so we find that uh, over here, this colored water is black. So it's easier to see. Okay, and then uh, what he's going to do is he's going to have this syringe, uh, satu picha gari, which is empty. Uh, there's nothing in here except for gas. Okay, now, when I push the syringe inside, uh, tell me, uh, am I increasing the gas pressure or decreasing the gas pressure? When I push the syringe in, what do you think? Am I increasing the gas pressure or decreasing the gas pressure? Increasing. Increasing, okay, thank you. Yeah, so you're increasing gas pressure because there is the same amount of gas. Uh, gas itu sama tau, but there is much less space. Okay, kurang sudah tempat untuk ini. Just like you all lah. Let's say uh, if the 27 people, right, I put in a day one lah. Okay, and the 27 people lah, I put in the, I put in one cubicle in the boys' toilet. All 27 of you are uh, in the day one. Okay, there's a lot of space to move, right? So you don't feel so much pressure. And all 27 of you are in one cubicle in the boys' toilet. Okay, you know how stressful that's going to be? You have so little space. Okay, and somehow it's the boys' toilet. <laughs> so, okay, so you have so little space. So it's going to be very high pressure for you all. So in that way, uh, we are also doing the same thing. When we push the syringe, we are decreasing the amount of space for the gas to move. So the gas is going to feel very pressure, okay? Like, gas is like that, like, you know, when you give very little space for the gas to move, the gas is going to have this immense amount of pressure, okay? So they're going to kind of the pressure, and that's why we're going to see this situation, okay? Since this end of the manometer is open, we know that over here, this is atmospheric pressure pressing down. And since this one over here, this is going to be gas pressure. So in this case, the gas pressure is winning. Okay, so this difference in height, okay, this difference in height, H, will be gas pressure minus atmospheric pressure because gas pressure is winning, okay, when we push in the thing. So let's watch this video and I know that you guys can't hear the sound. So, uh, yeah, That's manometer so. over here, okay, so he's going to take this syringe and he's going to attach it to the, this, this side of the tube is closed and he's going to make the space smaller, okay? So, when he makes the space smaller, okay, the pressure is going to increase, just like you say lah. Okay, so he's going to push. And then you see that when he pushes, look, there's going to be a difference of height, okay? Because he's forcing the gas molecules to go into this space. So the gas pressure is going to this. So the more he pushes it in, the bigger the height. Remember that this part uh, is an open, uh, this one, uh, open tube, okay? But when he takes out the syringe, look what happens. Yeah, 
So the level is going to be the same because it's atmospheric pressure here and also atmospheric pressure here. So it's going, it's going to be the same. Okay. But when he puts in the syringe again, okay. So right now there's it's still the same because he hasn't pushed up. But once he push, look, there's a change in height. So we can calculate the change in height. Okay. So use that's why you have a ruler over here. You have a ruler over here so that you can see, oh okay, this is what level, this is what level, and you know how long this is. Lah. Okay. Then you can use the same formula as I said just now, H equals to Astaga. H equals to gas pressure minus atmospheric pressure. Now he says this is about 19 millimeters. Oh sorry, 190 millimeters. So this is about 19 cm. Lah. Okay, 19 cm equals to gas pressure minus the value of atmospheric pressure will be 76 because we are using mercury lah in this case 76 centimeter mercury so we can calculate the gas pressure the gas pressure oh dear <laughs> the gas pressure will be 19 plus 76 okay so it'll be about 95 i think is it 95 yeah 95 centimeter mercury Okay, so this is how we count the gas pressure in the unit of centimeter mercury. Okay, because we're using mercury in this case. Lah. Okay. So, so the difference in height just now was 19 centimeters. Lah, okay, but now he's making the space bigger. Okay, he's making the space bigger. And so obviously atmospheric pressure is going to win. Lah. Okay. So since the gas pressure is losing, we will say that H equals to uh, atmospheric pressure minus gas pressure because gas pressure is losing. So assume he has said that assume this is 19 cm lah. So let's say this is 19 cm. Let's say the difference here is 19 centimeter. Okay, then you have 76 minus the gas pressure. So you can actually calculate the gas pressure from here. Okay, the gas pressure will be 76 minus a eh, minus yeah minus 19. Okay, the gas pressure will be 76 minus 19. Okay. But when you do it the other side, you have to plus. When you take it out, you have to minus. Lah. So 76 minus 19 will give you uh <laughs> sorry, 17, uh 6 minus 1 is 5, 57. Okay, 57 centimeter mercury. Okay. So remember if you're using atmospheric pressure as centimeter mercury. Then your gas pressure and your H uh, will also be centimeter mercury. Lah. Okay, so this is why this part of the calculation is actually quite simple because you're just using centimeter mercury. After that, uh, then you convert into uh, you you convert it into Pascal lah, if you want. Okay, which I think is the next part. Lah. Okay, so I'm gonna continue with this. Huh? So uh, this is the example that is in your textbook. So take a look. Huh? When we count the difference in high is 25 centimeters. Lah. Okay, then after that, we count the tekanan udara dalam pipe, which is the gas pressure. So let's say you get 100 centimeter Hg, because obviously in this case, gas pressure is winning. Okay, so you add. Then after you get the gas pressure in centimeter mercury, then we do the Pascal conversion. Okay, so Pascal conversion, we use the first formula that we use now, which is P equals to H rho G or rho Hg. Okay, so you use the density of mercury and then the gravitational acceleration, which is 9.81. Okay, but don't forget to change the centimeter Hg to meters. Okay, this is the important thing that we always tend to forget. Lah. Okay, so when you want to do a conversion from centimeter mercury to Pascal, make sure that you have converted the centimeter to meter. Okay, before you uh, substitute it. Okay, which is why they're working over here. Okay, so the other question that a lot of students tend to ask me is, can we do, can we convert the 25 and the 75 into Pascal and then we add it together? Okay, no problem. Okay, if you want to do that, you will get the exact same answer. You will get 1.33 times 10 to the power of 5. But if you think about it logically, why you want to convert it twice? Can't. 
Myself just count in centimeter mercury. Baru kamu tukar pergi pascal, satu kali saja kamu kena tukar. If you want to do 25 lah, 75 lah, change to pascal lah, you have to change to pascal twice. And then you add on top of it. So it's more work for the same thing lah. Okay, you can do it if you want, totally no problem, you will get the exact same answer. Okay, so let's try a couple of questions. Huh? Let's okay, yeah, we got time to do questions. Huh? So, mercury manometer over here attached to one end, gas supply measures a difference in the level of mercury 32 centimeters. So, the difference in height over here is 32 centimeters. Okay, think about who is winning. Huh? I want you to try this question. Huh? Calculate this gas pressure in centimeter mercury and then convert it into Pascal. Okay, give you two minutes to do this. Okay, can I? Uh, I'm very lazy to call names today. Somebody uh, can give me the gas pressure in centimeter mercury, please. One hundred eight. Okay, one zero eight uh, centimeter mercury. Eh, kenapa ini ya? Padahal ada juga di punya job. <laughs> okay, hundred centi hundred eight centimeter mercury. How about in pascal? <laughs> One four four zero eight nine point two eight. One four four zero eight nine point two eight pascal. Is everybody okay with this? A bit kurang. Yes, sir. Okay, ah. Uh? Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Um. Just, just one piece of advice, lah. Whenever you count gas pressure and you get this very long number, right? One four four zero eight nine point two eight, lah. This is purely from an exam point of view, ah. Jangan bundarkan. Okay, don't do 1.44 times 10 to the power of 5. Elakkan daripada begini lah. This is the better answer. Ini lebih tepat. This one is a little bit too different already. 144000. Okay, 144000 and 144089 uh, is a very big difference. So, uh, try to give your answer in this form. Okay, better than this. Uh, this is, try, not, try to avoid this lah. Okay, I know ini lebih kemas lah. Nampak lebih kemas, but this is the better answer. Okay, all right. Of course, we have to uh, 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 ignore this, huh? Okay, let's try this. The same thing. Okay. Uh, ooh. Okay. Yeah. Try the same thing again. Huh? Yeah. Calculate the pressure in centimeter mercury, and then after that, convert it into pascal, and then answer question C. Will your answer change if the manometer has a larger diameter? Ooh, interesting. What's the answer for gas pressure in centimeter mercury? Uh, 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 116 uh, cm okay. HG. All right. All right. Then 116 the one 154762.56 pascal. 154762.56. Point. Point what? Oh, six, six, six. Oh, 0.56. Will the answer in A and B change if the glass tube of the manometer has a larger diameter? What do you think? Okay, I see Shim doing this. I see Mich I see Michelle doing. So I assume this is no. Because this can't be yes. Because yes is bigger, right? Like yes is bigger. <laughs> so no is no is like that. Lah. Okay. Um Okay, so obviously the answer will be no lah because diameter of the glass tube does not affect gas pressure. Okay, nothing. The diameter doesn't change. The shape of this one, okay, doesn't change lah. Okay, uh, let's do this. Number three, figure shows a water manometer, okay, connected to a flask containing gas. Now, this is water, everybody. Water is a little bit different. Okay, water, the atmospheric pressure for water is 10.3. Okay, so whenever we calculate the gas pressure, oh, okay, you know what? Let's compare. Lah. Compare the gas pressure in the flask, okay, and the atmospheric pressure. Who's winning in this case? Gas pressure or atmospheric pressure? Gas. Okay, gas pressure is winning. Lah. So gas pressure is more than atmospheric pressure. Remember, guys, compare questions. We always have to say something is bigger than something else. Lah. Okay, so state the difference between the gas pressure and the atmospheric pressure in meter water. So this is slightly different now. We've been using centimeter all this while, okay? But now we say the centimeter, the difference in the gas pressure and the atmospheric pressure is 36 centimeters. So we have to convert it into a uh, meter, okay? So that's why it's 0 0.36 meter water. 
Okay, because uh, the okay the reason why we're using water is because inside the manometer is water. So below ini, in our previous example, we've been using mercury. That's why the unit is centimeter mercury. If you remember when I was talking to you about atmospheric pressure, I said how you measure atmospheric pressure, uh, sorry, the unit that you want to use uh, depends on what liquid you're using, okay, to measure the pressure. If you're using uh, mercury, then make sure it is centimeter mercury. Okay, if you're using water, okay, then you make sure that it's in meter water. The only difference is centimeter, one is in centimeter and the other one is in meter. Do we have a unit called meter mercury or do we have a unit called centimeter water actually god okay actually god we can use centimeter water we can use meter mercury okay but the standard uh, is to use centimeter mercury and meter water okay so please take note of this now uh, everything depends on what is the liquid that you use inside the manometer okay or even inside the barometer uh, for that matter Okay, so when we calculate the gas pressure in Pascal, we use the same formula except that now the atmospheric pressure we're using 10.3. Okay, Gra uh, gravity of course is 9.81. Can you convert this please? 0 0.36 meter water, please convert it into Pascal. Okay, sorry Jessica, go ahead. Uh, 104574.6 Pascal. 4.6 pascal everybody okay with this yes okay huh? yes. all right okay yes. uh okay so obviously this is out lah. okay uh same thing over here except that now uh atmospheric pressure is winning so state whether the air pressure is continent is higher or lower obviously is uh atmospheric pressure lah. okay and the reason oh they cakap explain your answer tapi dia tiap bagi jawapan pula. because the difference in height is lebih kepada the, the, the air pressure. Okay, the difference in height is bigger on the side of, on the left side lah. That's how you would explain lah. Okay, you can explain that. So, same thing, calculate the difference in pressure between the air pressure in the container and the atmospheric pressure. So, the good news is, it's already 24. Okay, and since we're using mercury, so obviously we have to do this is 24 cmhg lah. Okay, uh, the difference is already given, so I'm not going to waste time now. Let's just, uh, because we've done this calculation so many times. So the conversion to Pascal, uh, you can do this on your own later. Lah. Okay, all right. So this is, let's take a look at this now. So a mercury manometer is connected to a steel cylinder, okay, containing a compressed gas. So you have a manometer over here, okay, and it's connected to uh is connected to this one okay with gas over here okay please forgive my ugly drawing now the pressure of the compressed gas is 108 so over here is 108 kilopascal and atmospheric pressure is 101 kilopascal so calculate the difference in height Astaga, <laughs> sorry calculate the difference in height i tell you uh, my pen is not very helpful to me today okay so obviously in this case which side is going to be higher the the mercury uh, which side is going to be higher is it going to be the gas side or the atmospheric pressure side somebody okay. the gas side is going to be higher <gasps> sorry what is 180 gas is 180 atmospheric pressure is 101 so which side is going to be higher atmospheric okay it's going to be the atmospheric side is going to be higher because the gas is stronger than the atmospheric so atmospheric side is going to be higher and therefore there is going to be this difference in height okay so let's talk about this the difference in height is the gas pressure minus the atmospheric pressure but since you are given both in kilopascals so you will have to Minus it in kilopascal first. One zero one. Okay. Yeah, one eight zero minus one zero one. That's about atmospheric is losing. Okay, so this will give you seventy nine kilopascals. Okay, after you get seventy nine kilopascals, then you calculate the value of H. 
P equals to rho Hg, calculate this value of H in centimeter uh, mercury. Okay, use 79 kilopascals, substitute it in P over here, then you get the value of H. Can you try this? Can you try this first? So we need to know how to you know work these two formulas around okay yeah 59 59.2 betul kan ni 59.2 centimeter mercury oh calculate the difference in height okay centimeters ah okay can you tell me how you got 59.2 bagi tahu dulu kau punya jalan kerja um 79,000 Okay Divide to 13,000 Okay <laughs> Then Divide to 9.81 Okay, divide by 9.81 Okay, yeah So this will be equals to H Because, <clears throat> okay, so This was the thing that I'm looking out for lah, Okay, times 1000 Because uh, we are using kilo pascals So remember that when we use The pressure formula, P equals to rho G H H must be in meters Okay, and then on top of that The pascal uh, uh, Sorry, pressure must be in pascal Not kilo pascal and that's why Mordecai he multiplied by 1000. So you get P, sorry, P equals to H rho, rho HG. So P is 79,000, okay, because kilopascals equals to rho is 13,600, okay. Uh, and then you get H and then it's 9.81. Tapi dia punya jawapan bukan 59.2 bahkan. Actually you get H equals to, is it 0 0.592? Yes, yes. Ah, okay, but this is in meters lah. Okay, so uh, then after that you convert it into 59.2 cm. Okay, so just learn how to work around this formula. It's not that difficult lah because we've done this before. Okay, talking about kilo, millimeter, all these things. And then remember that this H actually is in meters, but usually we kind of want it in centimeters lah. Okay, this answer is also correct, no problem. Okay, but you have to make sure that you write the correct unit. Okay, and not centimeters. Okay. Okay, okay so again, uh, another barometer nearby is 756 millimeter Hg. Now, look at this. Uh, the reading of an aneroid barometer nearby is 756 millimeter Hg. Okay, remember, uh, what does an aneroid barometer measure? Aneroid barometer measures uh, atmospheric pressure. So, in a way, uh, this sentence is telling you that the atmospheric pressure is 756 millimeter mercury, which we need to convert into centimeters. So it is 75.6 centimeter mercury. Why is it like inconsistent? Huh? So some of you may be asking, kenapa sekejap 76, sekejap 75, sekejap 75.6? Well, you never know. Maybe this oxygen cylinder is up the mountain. Up the mountain, there is less atmospheric pressure, or halfway up the mountain. Okay, so that's why. So calculate the oxygen pressure in Pascal. Okay, so we need to calculate the oxygen pressure, convert it into Pascal. Can you try this first, please? Uh, we are using water, guys. We are using water. This is water. Okay, so uh, you not only have to convert to centimeter, you have to convert it to meter like it. <laughs> Oh, this is so interesting. Yeah, anyway. Make sure everything is in meters, huh, guys, because we're using water. Okay, calculate the oxygen pressure, please. Well, this is our last one for today, I think. Okay, I'm running out of time, so I better get down to this. So, first thing of course, you are uh, the gas pressure you have to calculate because the gas pressure will be the atmospheric pressure plus the difference in this one. But now, take a look at this first, okay? So what is going to happen over here is uh, this guy, what well, this person who did is like he converted everything into Pascal. Okay, which is actually possible. You convert everything into Pascal, okay, and then only you add this together. 
it, the reason why we are doing this uh, is because the atmospheric pressure is in one unit, which is in mercury, but the gas pressure is using water. Okay, so instead of converting everything into water and this one, okay, it's better to convert it into Pascal first. Okay, so this is probably the last thing that you need to remember when you're talking about gas pressure uh, that involves two different units altogether. You cannot, okay, the thing that you cannot do, uh, okay, is, which I may have uh, accidentally, uh, accidentally, lah, okay, ex accidentally misled for you is, oh, 38 centimeter plus 76 centimeter. Cannot, uh, you cannot do that because the 75.6 is in mercury. Okay, and the 38 uh, is in water. You cannot mix these two. You cannot add this together, although both of them are in CM. Okay, it doesn't work that way. So this is one of those cases where you have to convert everyone into Pascal, then you can add them together. Okay, and it's, uh, I mean, this is basic physics calculation. Lah. If you want to add two things together, you must make sure that they're in the same unit. Okay, so the point of this exercise uh, is to show you that centimeter mercury and meter water or even meter mercury and meter water uh, is not the same. You cannot add them together because one is using mercury and the other one is using water. So when you have this kind of case, make sure that you convert to Pascal first and then only you add them together. Okay, so uh, I would suggest that, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to screenshot this uh, so that you can take a look at this question and try it on your set. Try it uh, uh, with you. Lah. Okay, try it on your own. Okay, but I want you to get used to this. Lah. When you are involving two different liquids, one water, one mercury, make sure you convert it to Pascal before you add them together. B, describe what happens to the level of water in the manometer when the stopper is removed. When you remove this stopper, what happens? They're going to be at the same level. So oxygen is going to flow out. So the gas pressure is going to decrease until it's equal with the atmospheric pressure. Okay. Uh, like in the same case just now, lah, when I take out the syringe, can, just the water can uh, be the same level because now everything is uh, atmospheric pressure. 